So it turns out the winner of Blast Spring will be the only team to have won multiple big events this season, which is a big deal, especially for Na'Vi fans who are trying to combat allegations of their major being a fluke, which I think people misunderstand the idea of a fluke when they say that. But regardless, uh, Spirit on the other side, really have probably the most individually talented roster out there. It's hard to argue against, but they just can't seem to get things done in semis, in finals. You know, they can't seem to win tournaments the way you would generally expect. And unfortunately, we're doing lots of Dust 2, but it just seems like Dust 2 has generally been giving us some of the most climactic games, really, so far since the map's release. A lot of these games have been really entertaining, maybe because teams are kind of relearning Dust 2 or whatever, but they've just been great. So anyways, pissed around, already into a 4v4, Zontix takes a bit of a risk trying to get to the right side there. If Zontix got right side of B before that swing came in from Emma and Alexi B, then that round would basically be a gimme. Because he didn't, even getting one is actually a really big deal. But this flank from Wonderful, sh okay, never mind. That flank I was thinking was going to change the game. And it might still be a clutch from Wonderful. Man, Wonderful has had so many clutches in this event, especially with the op in hand. He's like a clutch god. But actually, opera on opera duo, Shiro's the one that picks up the clutch. All right. I mean, pistorons are pistorons. And statistically, I've said this before, but I said this a while back, and you might not follow me on Twitter because my Twitter is mostly just memes, okay? Admittedly. Um,. Generally, pistol rounds seem to matter less in CS2 so far than in CSGO, in terms of if you win both pistols, you're less likely to win the game. But there are arguments that they matter, you know, more, and it's just because of the MR12, you have individual form factor matters a lot more. So, I don't know, it, it's hard to argue either way. In any case, you do have a bit of a buy here coming out from Na'Vi, they've got Deagles, which is... I mean, they're insanely effective, especially on Dust 2, just because you have so many long-range angles where you can duel people, and the CT side, they want to have some MP9s because there's great spots to have MP9s at, but at the same time, if you have MP9s, then you're, you've got to play angles that you don't really want. So I actually really like that play from Na'Vi. They got really quickly up short, and then they just dueled out short. And you're you're expecting to oftentimes deal with maybe a scout on car, but definitely a scout isn't one-shotting people that, you know, consistently. You can easily trade on a scout in those situations. So I think that's a really interesting and, and probably just a really good uh, setup, like the style of play on second round in that situation. Um, anyways, here... It, was this the best spawn from Donk? Was this the best spawn? This was the best spawn. He ran straight there. This is the trouble. Bit's going... Bit is specifically trying to stop this play. This is a play a lot of teams love doing. They have this little lineup now that they love going for. And Bit, he's not trying to kill someone corner necessarily. He's going deep. You don't go that deep if you're not trying to specifically kill someone crossing the pit. Now, of course, you can kill someone crossing, you know, peeking corner as well that's definitely possible but that's the main idea behind that play really clearly is to catch someone crossing the pit which is exactly what he does and that puts you know that puts spirit in a really uncomfortable spot they have to they've lost long control so they have to re-aggress on a cat if alexi b gets this kill this round this round is like low-key over but that is a really nice combination actually from from shiro and magis magics and that leaves zontix well there's still two players here but maybe navi was thinking there might only be two and so they move into this type of b split really quickly and the b split kind of works out but unfortunately i mean they only had three players going for it so even though the trades go fairly well the bomb ends up down outside b and jl he's just in a really unwinnable spot there I can definitely see exactly how that went down. I really like the play from both teams on Cat. Alexi B, if he gets, you know, he's got a lot of information if he goes for that, right? If they're not there, then that's when Navi might have to pivot a second player or a third player over to A to try and help support that inevitable Cat hit. And if they are there, I mean, if Alexi B gets that kill, that's round over, right? But I really like the idea from Spirit as well. They, they had that second player there, and as soon as contact comes in, that flash gets thrown. So... The fact that the kill didn't come in immediately actually works really perfectly for Spirit. Now, the question is, you know, should that kill have come in immediately? Usually, you're going to end up with someone dying with that type of peak. But anyways, back onto the pistols again for Na'Vi. And I mean, this is the problem, right? The CT side, 
they're given some ability to build up money specifically when they win piston round compared to, you know, if they don't win piston round, they never get the chance to build up money. But because of the Deagles bought on the second round, they were able to actually do some damage. And that ends with, I mean, Spirit just doesn't have any money, right? Like, even though they're up 3 0, they should be up 4 0. As long as you get like a couple of kills here from Navi. They should be feeling, or a couple years, yeah, from Navi. <laughs> Sorry. I know I've, I've probably got these teams backwards a couple of times already. As long as you get a couple year kills here if you're Navi, you should feel pretty comfortable with, with your situation. You're still one round away from breaking the economy of that CT side. So there's, you're, you're not panicking quite yet in this situation. And with the scout... Even in a 3v5, you can definitely get something done. And you can see, I mean, even in this situation, it's still like, you know, Dust2 does leave opportunities for T's to find openings. And the key is where you really want to be catching people is you want to be catching people when they're in the open. But it can be kind of hard to do that when you don't have an op and you're fighting against, you know, uh, a scout, right? You want to be fighting those guys when they're into the open, but you need someone to spot them to see when they're in the open so that you can go for the play. But if you do that, your odds of getting scouted or 1D are really high, right? Especially against Deagles. The best way to deal with a Deagle, by the way, the entire idea, the best way to deal with a Deagle, don't get 1D. <laughs> Easier said than done. But the idea being, once the, the player with the Deagle has peaked you and not instantly killed you, once they're on a shot 2 and 3 and crosshair placement is no longer, you know, the main factor, the odds of them killing you go down a lot. Uh, part of the reason that uh, that Dust 2, I think, is so maligned is that uh, you have, especially with MR12, Dust 2 is a random focused map, meaning your spawns matter a shit ton. And as a CT, sometimes you want to open 212. But if they go A when you open 212, you're just not, you're not supposed to be winning, you know? You're just in a really bad spot. So you've got open 212 from Spirit. That could actually... The, the part of the point of the 212 this type of kill can easily bait Navi into a bad play here it could easily I saw that with the uh, phase versus vitality game you know you get that one kill and you're starting to think okay we've only got one player on B we can easily go for a mid B split but if they've got two players there you can end up really screwing yourself over but on the other hand you have the kills actually coming back spirit way, and then this lurk is going to be the difference maker. Magix is in a perfect spot to deal with this, and hits a couple nice shots, leaving Wonderful 1v3. Wonderful, man, he's got so many clutches this tournament, but uh, that's two clutch losses, unfortunately, and both of them would have been, like, game-changing plays. Not only because... Uh, oh, actually, Shiro did have an op. Okay, I was, I was going to say, not only because of the round, but also because they're giving an op over for free. Uh, but actually, Shiro did already have an op. And they don't go for the double op. Uh, we've already seen in this tournament a couple of times, Donk is happy to pick up an op. Ops are pretty strong on Dust 2. I think Dust 2 is probably the map where you're thinking double op setups. You're thinking, because theoretically... The, be the best place on the entire map for an off is Game Helper, right? Right here. Because you can support long, you can support cat, uh, it, it's just, you can support mid, it's just so hard to deal with. But, at the same time, mid is also a great place to have an off. Short is also a great place to have an off, right? So there's so many ways, and, and B, if you just pick into B tunnels, you can uh, hold this line for a little bit and then start shift walking in, and that covers for the times when you have a rifler B that just doesn't want to throw a smoke early. If you sometimes have an op walk in, they have they can't just be like, oh, no smoke? Okay, we're just going to walk up, you know, and, and walk into them. But... Uh, not going for the double op is Spirit, and that flash is supposed to, basically Donk is not supposed to really get blind by that, but he gets blind just enough that, uh, that it works out. And then they accelerate. They're gonna accelerate out mid, right? Prevent the rotate. Alexi B through the smoke just tosses the molly because he knows all he needs to do is block that rotate because he knows that in this setup there's only one B. But at the same time, they're still forcing individual gunfights because that is kind of dust too. They have to take some risks. And in taking those risks, they've opened themselves right back up to this type of play where they lose a player, bomb goes down, and they should know that Bit has, you know, they it, it's clear they have an idea that Bit could be way up here, right? 
because of the way that that rotate was happening it was clear that bit must have been out a for that rotate to be happening and this is the most awkward situation ever because everyone in the entire game is lit isn't it uh leaves it to magics that we that na oh no that nade definitely would have just blown Alexi B up. That is like an underrated nade. There's also one that you can throw from in CT where you like jump throw it. This was becoming super common at the end of CSGO because it catches people as they jump Xbox up onto uh, up onto short. But uh, it's very similar to the one he was trying to throw there and he just barely missed it. All right. Navi does have these spawn corner smokes it looks like. Not throwing it this round as I was trying to show it, but... They do have these spawn corner smokes, which mean that it means the smoke's corner can land and bloom a lot faster than um, th it can enable a rush. Anyways, fast out mid. Lots of teams are loving to do this. Again, into a 2-1-2, and Tonk is not supposed to get a kill there. Bit, come on. Bit, he's already... Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm misremembering. I thought it was Bit that hit a couple nice shots in a, a previous round. Uh, that is... Ugh, that is rough. Because if Donk doesn't get a kill there, well, the part of the problem is if Donk doesn't get a kill there, they might be thinking, you know, should we accelerate into B, and they might move right into their trap. But regardless, a 5v4 is better than not a 5v4. But there's a contact on A, and off of that, Emma's going to want to come right out long as fast as possible. But Magic's with the MP9, might even be more broke than they're expecting, is going to be close up, gets the kill. JL's going to be lurking out mid. Again, you can see just over and over, individual fights have to be taken on this map, and there's really no way to avoid that. Now, you can give yourself the best chances possible by, you know, putting yourself in good individual fights. JL found a good timing. Wonderful's going to be rotating back over, and that forces Zontix out early. Zontix hears the footsteps, so he's going to be trying to peek out to catch that rotate into lower, which is how Spirit would be winning the round here, but... You know, JL's still waiting for it. But still, if Zontix had won that fight, which is very possible, again, this round could have gone back the other way. So it really does feel like, I don't know, Dust2 has given us some insanely competitive games. Almost every time I've seen Dust2 in a big event since Dust2 has come back to the, to the map pool, it's been really good games. Like, consistently, over and over and over. But at the same time... Uh, am I loving how much that it just feels like, you know, you have to force, you're forced to take individual duels and, you know, you even had a 5v3, arguably Navi, the 5v3, it was 5v3 or 5v2 that they lost, you know, probably could have been played a little bit differently uh, to mitigate the, the chances of losing, but they... The, in playing the percentages, sometimes you do you do just have to take some risks and say, you know, the majority of the time this is a good idea, and once in a while we're going to lose. Because there's no there's just no way to mitigate the opportunity for you to lose uh, any round at any point. <laughs> like, you, there will always be losses, right? Anyways, uh, Chopper gets aggressive into tunnels, and that's basically the problem. Chopper had a lot of control, and that's the risk you take when you go for more, right? Because it looks like Chopper got spotted by JL. If Chopper had just stayed in upper tunnels, sometimes that's a bit of a bait, actually. You give up tunnels if you know that a team likes to get aggressive into tunnels on anti-eco, if they like to walk into tunnels. You can give it up, and then I remember seeing this often. They give it up, and then, oh my god, there's four people walking back into tunnels late. It's hard to deal with, right? Because you, you, you go, okay, well, all of it is clear, but it's so easy to get back from, you know, we've got long control, they've got so much control of everything, it's so easy to get back and then just walk into tunnels, and if you get that kill, or even if you just clear that out, you just go straight into B, B's completely empty, and the round is basically over, right? So, and it's not even going to be, shouldn't even really be any kills going the way of Spirit here. Uh, they've got the AK saved over from Donk. Maybe he can get one if he can get a gun for Magix, because they're playing together here. And he does get the one, so Magix might be able to pick that up, but <laughs> the question is, can they survive? And should should a hunt be going on here? Because, you know, on T side... Oh, this is hilarious. If they had a kit, this is, like, actually a winning round. If they had a kit, this round is actually just won by Spirit. That's hilarious. Because because Navi was so focused on hunting. Uh, and Magix... I'm surprised he didn't turn around just to kill a bit there. You want to hunt in this situation, right? Because you want to you want to take some money out of the hands of the CTs, but at the same time, the T's don't have that much money either. Like they're not rolling in the dough. So, are should you be hunting there every time? It feels like a spot where you're probably supposed to be hunting, but it is like you need to hunt well because it really can go real real wrong. 
when uh, when that goes like that. But, uh, well, that's exactly what happens. Now, Magix is just going to be contesting long here alone. This is the type of thing that, you know, I remember watching uh, Gambit when Dust2 got introduced back in, I don't, uh, did it get reintroduced in like 2020 in CSGO? Or with the with the new change, or was it just when it got changed? I remember Gambit was the first team that really seemed to be uh, contesting Cat with like one or two players because they would have they had Axile, right? So Axile would just go back Cat a little bit delayed, and he would contest Cat alone, which is very much like a matchmaking play, but it was really effective because you can catch your opponents off guard doing that. And that's really what I would have expected Spirit to be doing with Donk to have Donk as that player that sometimes just goes Cat, especially because you know. Actually, as this retake goes on. Decent trade. I mean, maybe Alexi B could get a couple kills here. Would actually make this super damaging to the CT economy. But actually, if he just kills Zontix here, it's it would have been really hard for Shiro to actually make anything happen. Uh, anyways, I, I would have more expected Donk to be that guy that would occasionally go cat on, uh, on CT side and be an A player. But having him as the mid player also makes perfect sense, right? Uh, sometimes Donk does seem to be in odd positions. I mean, him being the B player on Vertigo was uh, very notable. Like, highly, highly notable. Uh, that didn't seem to be going too well for, for Spirit for a while, but seems to be going fine now that they've switched him over to A. Although, to be fair, I mean, having him on uh, mid is not, like, crazy. It's just, I would have, would have, if I was predicting, I would have expected him to be more of a cat player. I think I mentioned this in my last Spirit game, too. Anyways, boost in the, the boost in mid to get all the information on the cross, but that forces a smoke cross, right? Uh, and if you have to smoke cross, then that, that fast lurk out mid that we see JL's gone for a couple times. We've seen other players on different teams. I mean, FaZe has done that f a few times in this tournament. That fast lurk out mid is hard to deal with because smokes in CS2 are just so huge. You, you really remove almost any ability for yourself to clear anything if you smoke out your own mid. So Lexi B out long gets the kill, which is huge. Uh, I mean, again, you had Magix in a really good position, but I think he might have just been a little too wide. I don't think I think Alexi B was able to spot him before actually uh, putting himself vulnerable to a player left side doors, which is exactly what you want out of that. But that long control given over opens up a lot of opportunities for Navi, and they're just going to be throwing the delayed resmoke, so they're going to smoke and then wait and then resmoke. and what you're doing is you're trying to bait out those nades so that your opponents can't know when you're crossing and that's exactly what works right like spirit want to be nading that cross and they've got plenty of nades to be nading that cross but because navi keep smoking and then resmoking and sometimes crossing fast sometimes delaying all this stuff it, it ends up in this situation where you, you you just have to get lucky on the timing of the nade right and they didn't get lucky this time around Zontix is actually, if that nade had dunked on, uh, on plat there, this is actually super winnable. It's not unwinnable, but the fact that they know where Zontix is coming from makes this a really uncomfortable situation. It's almost one where you might even consider saving, but because of the money, because the money is so bad, the buy next round is going to be completely fucked regardless. So you, st it's one of those situations where like, if the money was better, he might have considered saving, I think. Oh, but he doesn't have a kit. Oh, there he's got the opto. Yeah, if the money was better, that's a situation where I think saving makes a lot of sense because then saving means that you can actually buy. Whereas in that situation, saving doesn't actually fundamentally change how your next round really looks. You've got an extra gun, cool. But if you win the round, it makes a much bigger deal. Would he have saved if there was more money? Probably still not. I mean, it's a 1v2. You still have a chance to win, but it's one. It's you would maybe you would definitely maybe you would consider it, right? If you uh, if you had slightly more money in that buy, the the save would would actually fundamentally change the buy into the following round. But he does save the op. He almost if he had a kid, he would have won that, which is actually crazy. But again, I mean, Navi are just controlling long when they have the spawns, which is most of what I think has really turned this one back around. This control on long. And, and just how strong they've been on anti uh, on, on ecos, how much damage they've been able to get done on ecos has made a massive difference. Uh, but just the free long control, 
Plus, Shiro is still confident here. Because the op is saved over, he can be going for information here, and you don't have an op on the side of Navi. So what should have just been a kill onto Shiro, and it should be 4v4, instead is Shiro with 30 health, right? Because Wonderful just has a scout right now because of that damage that got done. So the damage done makes a massive difference in the outcome of this round. But Wonderful not surviving there actually is what's going to make this one possible. Or sorry, not wonderful, but uh, the player on plat. I want to see this from Jail, actually. So, just, it's a nice shot here, I think, from Bit. To take down Magics. 15 health, one shot, still gets... He, he takes 14 damage. That's crazy. I mean, this is the problem. This is the situation that happens in matchmaking or pugs all the time. You take long, and teams don't have enough... Uh... They don't keep pressure, so the C the T's take long, and then the CTs just rotate five people over there, and the the CTs or the T's just try and cross, and then you have a five v five, which is it's not impossible to win for the uh, for the T's, but it's not good, right? Uh, and and this case, it's not because Navi haven't like they've taken long and gone back short a couple of times or gone back mid, gone back wherever, but. Because of Shiro with the off on Platt, he actually had the ability to, to call his team over, and they ended up in that spot, and that was really just JL kind of saving them there. I mean, Bit getting a kill, if he didn't get that kill where he's 1 HP, he takes 14 damage from 15 health. If he doesn't get that kill, they also lose. Like, there's just so many ways that round was kind of going very badly uh, because the rotated got there in time, because Shiro was able to take those duels, because of the damage from the previous round. Oh no, oh no, oh no, Wonderful just misses a smoke there. People call it, people are gonna call that getting CS2 would or whatever. He just threw that between. It was this, that simple. Anyways, Alexi B, I think Alexi B, does he know someone's in the smoke? Because this flank, this flank is gonna be insane. This flank from Chopper, man, if he had kept going forward, that would have been a free flank. But now there's really only one thing that that's navi could be doing they have to be going on mid here so the it's just a complete collapse on the mid play and the thing is they left b to do that right which might seem questionable but in leaving b you overload the the mid play and actually jl now has a chance to win this just kidding uh in leaving b you overload that mid play where people have to be coming out and as long as you shut that down, it, it wouldn't matter if JL walked out B with the bomb there, right? Like, you're still, you're 4v1, you're just gonna win. As long as you shut down the mid side of that play. And if they didn't have anybody in mid, like, let's say, they were just gonna three-man walk out upper tunnels, as soon as you clear mid, then you just pivot over to B, and that B play is shut down immediately, right? So, although you leave one portion of the, the, the map opening, open completely, it's actually not to your detriment because of the t the speed at which you're going to be able to clear out the other side, the only other p place they could possibly be. Anyways. So, quite opposite of how the long hold went from from Spirit, which is, this is a, was, I believe, a very similar setup, which is one long and one boosted cat, right? Uh, instead of what happened last time, which is, I believe, Magic's got a kill on the player peeking long, it's actually the opposite. Spirit get the kill on the, the player long, and then they're just going to overwhelm site. Like, unless Wonderful... Yeah, I was going to say, unless Wonderful pulls off something crazy there, it's just going to be an overwhelm. And then you have Alexi B, who doesn't even have armor, so this is not great. JL just needs to find, like, a miracle 2k here. Uh, if they're going to have any chance of winning. But you even have the flank from Chopper, which does mean that, that this side, you know, the site side can get overwhelmed a little bit, potentially. But they just, they have three people here, right? So really what it is, okay. All right. I was going to say really what it is, it's like this backstab is just going to win the round. But I think they're trying not to kill him here. You can definitely see Donk is trying to let the bomb explode. Well, I was thinking, I was saying he was. I'm, JL should be begging to die to, to Donk right there. It's, you just, you make more money with the bomb exploding. So Donk here, he's, they're both going to die of the bomb no matter what. Donk here does not want to get this kill. But he's actually kind of going, is he like, is he just straight up not killing him? He shouldn't want that kill. At the very end, he does not want that kill. Because, to make it clear... 
Uh, each player with the bomb explosion victory, you make two hundred and fifty dollars per player more than a than a an elimination victory. So if the bomb explodes, your whole team you make twelve fifty more, right? So if everyone's gonna die anyways, then it's just free money. It's an extra nine fifty, right? Because you lose the three hundred that you would get for the kill, but it's still an extra thousand, which does end up making you know a pretty notable impact on on the game, having an extra thousand. Not only because it's an extra thousand, but because uh, in order to get AK armor without a bomb explosion, you need two kills, and with a bomb explosion, you need one. So it actually makes a. It's, it makes. A lot of the time, it makes a pretty big difference in terms of how many AKs you can potentially get on the second round compared to otherwise, uh, which is huge, right? Because not. Not having to get Galils. Well, Galils, you might want to upgrade at some point. Galils kind of fucking suck, just in general. And if you have a really clean second round and you have a lot of Galils, it's like, well, our, our, our third round is still kind of scuffed, right? Whereas if they had AKs instead of those Galils, it would be very different. But full save from Navi means they can have a full buy here. You don't have the best utility in the world, but Dust2 is not a map where that, that little bit extra utility necessarily is going to make the biggest deal. You just have to, to some extent, you're going to have to accept a couple of, you know, aim duels. You're going to have to accept that, you know, you can't play perfect utility-wise and just take some fights. And doubling up on Cat, pretty good way to do that. You've still got information on Long, Alexi B, Still has full, like, very good utility, almost full utility here, so we can still counter a long play if he wants. Now, eventually you want to smoke this, especially because uh, it, they could just be waiting here with several players, which lots of teams love to do. And if they are, and if you don't smoke that, then they don't have to cover left side, and left side is, like, the most dangerous place to worry about. Um, anyways, Donk on cat there's a very similar to what you saw spirit do with shiro they've got a player with a flash as soon as that utility starts getting thrown down he tries he counters with the flash for that swing but and it's actually very very similar because that that short take is basically a fake right in fact you can see the pivot right off that short take jail is already looking to rotate over and he goes oh wait no and because of that you can see exactly like how quick players are at this level to understand what's going on if that's not an actual cat take which it's not if that's not natural oh my god this is hilarious if that's not an actual cat take then what else are they doing they're either coming out mid or they're going b but they're not coming out mid which means they have to be setting up b so the timing is really really specific it's, it's funny because we again it was very similar to the exact almost it's somewhat different, but it's the same thing where Alexi B was trying to fake Cat to try and like push players off of Cat. He dies, and they immediately know what's happening on the other side. And what what was a fake that meant to go out mid ended up going really poorly. Anyways, I mean we've all seen long control a million times before, right? You're just you're kind of there's there's several ways you can play it as T's, but. And to be honest, there's several ways you can play this as CTs as well, but at the end of the day, you just, as long as everyone does their job somewhat correctly, you end up into aim duel, aim duel territory. You're just going to have to take some gunfights. You're just going to have to take some gunfights, and one of you is going to win, and one of you is going to lose. And in this case, it's Navi that kind of came away somewhat better for it. I mean, they did get the first kill because uh, you had that player... Wait. Did they get the first kill? No. Uh, that player tried to swing out. Again, very similar to what Spirit was doing. Swing out, try and catch that player across the pit. Uh, but it, I don't. I think they. I think Navi got the first kill off that. Long spawn again means. They, oh, did they not get long spawns? This is what I was talking about, by the way. Teams are really liking to boost this player up. And then when you boost this player up, you can actually have this player, even with the smoke, you can actually have him jump up and he can kind of see over. So you can kind of have a pretty good idea whether or not a player is left side. And then teams will just like hit out long a little bit late, and it it it, it manages to somewhat um it manages to build off of some of the other setups you might do where you're like slow in tunnels or those types of things, where your opponents have to be worried about a similar timing in different areas, right? Because sometimes teams will be like, okay, we go long instantly, or we go long really late, and in that mid round, like for between like one forty and like one minute, we never go long, that can be problematic. Because if teams know that you do that, they're just gonna 
they're just, you know, they're gonna be very weak on long. And you, you know, it's, it's gonna allow them to be a lot stronger on other areas of the map, right? So anyways, going back short is pretty much what you expect when it comes to piston rounds. And they did take the risk on the other side of the map. Uh, they took the risk out long at the same time. Which kind of actually worked out in that there was nobody close long, so the risk worked. That's the whole point of the boost. But, you know, the cat play had to work. If the cat play worked, then Alexa B would have been stranded on plat, and they actually probably would have gotten a, a, not only a plant, but one of the nice things about going short is that if you go short, uh, you can retrieve generally the guns that you kill if you kill them on short. Now, if you kill them elevator, it's a little different. But again, long control. Generally, it seems like so far in CS2, CT teams are putting a little bit less emphasis on long. They're not doing that four-man overload on long quite as often, and they're saving some utility some of the time. And that means that generally, it seems the T's are taking long control a little more consistently. And that might have to do with the fact that you can nade that long cross, right? So the, the T's having control of long just feels a little bit less impactful. But the utility usage here for Alexa B is really big, by the way. Because not he's in a smoke, and Zontix is just like, okay, we're just going to wait out the smoke, and I'm going to kill him right after. The molly helps, and then not only is there a molly, there's a smoke thrown that, that again, keeps Alexi B alive. So even though they know Alexi B is here, they still have to wait this out. And this is another problem with going long, taking it, and then continuing forward on long. Because these sorts of plays, like this one, where Alexi B is just sitting alive in car for a long time, they're, they're extremely hard to actually counter, unless you have, like, if you have short control, LXCV's position just sucks, right? They're just kind of fucked. But without short control, you, you have to deal with that player before you can actually do anything else. And in trying to do that, you either waste so much time that your opponents can do this type of flank, where Jail's just holding them in long now, or you uh, give the opportunity for... for for, uh, you know, for supportive players to actually change the way the round's going to be played. So Jail actually smokes it off again. The time's just completely out, yeah. So the play from Spirit, they took long control. They got long control relatively freely, but the conversion of long control into, you know, a site control is what went very poorly, right? So we'll see what the, the reaction there is. Navi, not really deterred almost at all. And, man, Navi really sending Wonderful into lower. This is like the second round in a row I think they did this. And he's just looking for timings. Like, this is so sketchy, dude. This is so sketchy. Someone could have... Generally, people don't dry peak lower anymore because there could be a guy on cat and also a guy uh, on cat. So, generally, they make a good amount of noise before they peak into lower or they have someone, like helping clear out mid before they peek into lower. So I can see the logic behind that, but it is, uh, can I find this player here? This is a NOA stack, by the way. NOA stack is this little double boost because you could, uh, see over the smoke in mid, obviously. You, you've all, it, it's gone, it's funny because it's gone in and out of favor. And it's called an NOA stack, which is from literally from CS 1.6, but there was times in Source that it became popular, and there was times in CSGO when that, that boost has been popular. I think that boost, by the way, is always really solid. Well, is often very solid uh, on Ecos, or like second round, kind of like Forces type of thing. If they come out mid, generally, you know, if they just peak mid like this, which some players like to do, they're going to peak to here, especially on a second round. Uh, you're just going to shoot, you're both going to be shooting at one guy. And if they try and smoke mid and then boost up or like jump up Xbox, then you're going to shoot them over. But the problem is most mid door smokes, uh, people know now how to throw a mid door smoke that kind of takes up the entire door. So, you know, that does kind of counter that angle. You can still spam through it because if it takes up the entire mid door, it's like a really tall smoke, which means it's... Um, the spam through it should, as long as you're spamming through a smoke and it's not like the very center of the smoke, generally you're going to see very well through that smoke. So I guess you could probably still spam through it, but you'd only want to be doing that maybe with a A1S or a USP or something. Anyways, standard-ish so far in mid. Uh, I still think that, you know, the, the, the drip smoke, the drip down smoke that lands up top and then covers all of mid doors, I feel like, I don't know if that's going to be... A permanent fixture 
in Dust 2 because you can nade it so easily versus when you see people throw Xbox smokes, they're a lot harder to nade. But here we got the flash from Alexi B. Emma, I don't think was supposed to fall there. I, uh, may maybe... Maybe he just heard a lot of people and he was like, fuck that. Because if there is a lot of people there, someone should still be back around the corner. So, like, a f someone shouldn't get blind from the flash or they can spam him anyways. But, yeah, interesting. I'm going to guess he probably wasn't supposed to drop there. So, this is where the rounds start being fairly, in my opinion, likely T-favored. Because with, with long control, or with short control, you can go for this type of exec up short, or you can go somewhere else. You can go back out mid or anything like that. That's the perfect play from Emma there. You really, you're generally going to get two in that situation, but he did lots of damage, which is key, right? It does actually make this winnable. If he got two, this is a really good spot. Only getting one means that you need someone like Alexi B. Alexi B is probably going to have to find a kill here. Otherwise, they're just not going to be in that great of a spot because as they filter back their way into short, then the short flank's not going to go well, and you just get kind of trapped. You need some pressure from the short flank to, to make that work. It's unfortunate because Emma had kind of like the exact right play you have that smoke down very similar to how it happened a couple rounds prior right you have that that control of alexi b on sh on car the the t's are trying to come up long but you can't go up long alone if the cts are causing that much problem for you to go up long you have to end up taking a risk and it's the same thing with short where if you want a stack to go up short and you're not gonna have anybody out long you do need to find some level of you know either luck in that like or timing or whatever you if the cts have that well-timed smoke which they did like a perfectly timed smoke uh you you're, you still need to come through it basically so you know they they're in a situation where they have to come through it and emma is in a great spot to deal with it he didn't whiff or anything he just didn't you know if he gets two kills there there's a good chance that round goes navi's way but with only one kill you could see they were kind of probing a little bit you know they knew that wasn't a perfect situation this is going to be really interesting so they've been throwing a lot of pressure long, a lot of pre even delayed pressure long. They've been throwing a lot of pressure short. They've basically been ignoring B and mid. So now they're going to turn that around to overload B off of that. And I really like that play. So something you have to be willing to do in CS2 now is you have to be willing to take that little tiny bit of extra time to throw this flash. You're not going to jump through the smoke. You don't want to jump through the smoke, but you need to go through. So you take that extra couple seconds drop the flash right click it and then you jump through with the flash and that's just the round one the only the problem for um the problem for jail there is generally you don't want that smoke to land like that because it lands here and because it lands here with that little gap between the front of the smoke and the edge of the tunnels because of that gap it means he has to be out here he has to be in the middle of the open to be fighting it whereas if the smoke lands like here then he can be I, he can jump on this box potentially, which I, I know in another Dust 2 review, I was like, is, is there a reason players aren't jumping on that box? Some players are jumping on that box still. Some players aren't. And I think part of the reason is that teams are so consistent with throwing flashes here and throwing flashes here that blind this player. There, That's probably the reason why. But if you have the smoke here, you can also play left side. You can play uh, here. You can have someone window helping you. You can even fall back to a spot like this if you wanted to, right? There's every option. But with the gap in front of that smoke, that means he has to be essentially looking at the smoke exactly, which means the right click flash through the smoke is a lot more effective. And there's reasons that you like. So if you have the smoke that lands further forward, one of the problems is if it if it gets out just a tiny bit, like even just a little bit in front of the tunnel, people can come out to the left of it, people can come out to the right of it, and nades can land in, on the ledge, like just, just here or just on the left side that will will clear out the smoke but not damage anyone right next to it. Like this smoke, you could nade kind of where JL is right now, and it would clear the smoke. And not only that, but you could have someone right on the corner and the nade wouldn't damage them, right? Because they're nading around the corner. So you have to be, like, very careful of having smokes not land kind of out at all. All right, so one of the things teams are doing is they're throwing... Um, this might have been from spawn. So, for, sorry, from outside long, it's likely Magix is going to be throwing this smoke. Uh, from outside long, <laughs> the timing can go wrong. But that's going to smoke off wonderful. And that means you can take Cat with a lot less 
trouble, right? You can take Cat without having to worry about this Opper, which is one of the reasons that you had to have that Molly, right? You traditionally have had to Molly that Opper back and then get Flash forward. Instead, you smoke that opera off and just the flash is going to deal with the majority of the locations that the CTs could be at. Now, the response smoke is big, but then you have to question, are we staying there for that long? Are we just going to leave Wonderful in a smoke because that could go really wrong? Instead, he drops back, and then as soon as he's spotted mid, they start pressuring up Cat instantly. So the instant reaction to Wonderful being spotted mid, because they know what that means. That means a site is pretty weak, and Emma with 1 HP, and MP9s are good, but not that good. <laughs> They're not that good. Uh, damn, that's a great call from Spirit. They just kind of slowly take that positioning back off of the hands of Na'Vi, and then they accelerate instantly off the information in middle that, you know, they know that rotates come over from A, which means if you accelerate up Cat, you're going to catch a very weak A play. And Na'Vi were playing pretty separated on A, generally. They were playing their long player close long, in long. They weren't playing a player um, game helper that often, and they weren't leaving long as much as Spirit. You saw Spirit take long and, and leave it somewhat, somewhat often. It was an interesting game. Uh, pretty good one. Respect, respect. I think re really good calling. I think from Chopper uh, in that game, but some just unfortunate gambles as well from from uh, from both teams. Honestly.